In this video, I will give a brief introduction to the concept of LiDAR and especially the LiDAR dataset that we can download in relationship to the Danish elevation model. So if we just start with looking at LiDAR as such, um, LiDAR is when we're talking about elevation data, framework data, typically some form of airborne uh, sensor, so on an airplane or a drone. And when it moves across the terrain, it will scan, sending out laser pulses to the ground. And the return signal is then registered, and the time lapse between the, the pulse left the plane and it returned is then used to calculate the distance. Um, and if we then know where the plane was using a precision GPS, and know the pitch and roll of the of the plane, we can calculate the location of the point on the surface and the height over the sea level and the, thus create a train model. Um, in addition to measuring the time lapse from the pots leaving the plane to the to the return returning, it also measures the amount of reflected light. So the intensity, and um, this can be used as some form of a black and white image. We can also have situations where we have a uh, autophoto system at the, at the same time, where we can assign RGB colors to um, the the locations of the laser pulses. Um, but that's you know additional things. Um, the typical attributes we'll find when we are um, working with the Danish data sets, of course, we'll find um, the coordinates, so the X, Y, Z coordinates. We'll find an intensity, so the, the intensity of the return depends to some degree of on um, the type of laser, which color it's using. Um, but typically, your darker, your dark, your less return we have. You'll have a RGB value. Or can have the data set that we are using will have a classification so that it has already been processed. Otherwise, you will have to do this processing yourself. So, if you are running on a drone or you having using a, um, a, a hand scanner for scanning buildings, you will need to do some classifications of what it is yourself. Each point, so each return will typically have. A, um, a number of returns. So each pulse sent from the plane can be returned by more than one object. So different if it's through vegetation, different levels of the vegetation. Therefore, we often have re return numbers on them, and the pulse. There can also be a number, a total number of returns for that pulse. We also register the, typically the angle that the laser beam was at. Which gives us some idea of the side looking effect and looking at facades from the plane, also. We will have a GPS time and some form of source, which is typically reflected the flight line of, um, of the sensor. So, um, that was basically the data. Um, if you're downloading data from some archive, it will typically be in the compressed version of it. So a LAZ file. Um, there's also a uncompressed, which is called LAS. It can also be in ASCII format, depending on the sensor type, but it does different format. But typically, when you download from an archive, it will be in LAS, and many of the devices deliver it. So LAZ for downloading, because it's compressed, or LAS for processing it. Um, there are many, ah, there are some tools um, for working with um, um, the LiDAR data. I um, use Last Tools or Cloud Compare. Um, Last Tool is a primary Windows tool, um, may command line. Um, cloud Compare um, can do lots of other cloud data sources than LiDAR. Um, so it, can be a bit confusing because it has many tools you don't need. 
but um, but it runs on both Windows and Mac, and has a graphical uh, user interface, so it is um, relatively easy to start on. It can just be downloaded from this web address. Um, both tools can convert, do some analysis of them, and visualize the data. So, um, but how we set up with using Cloud Compare here, but you could also choose to use uh, less tools combined with ArcGIS Pro, for instance. So, if um, we um, have a quick look at what LIDAR looks like, so this is um, the, com the Cloud Compare tool. And if I drag in a LAS file, so this is a LAS file that I drag into on it, and it asks me which data do I want to import. I want to just import all of it. Um, this is geographic coordinates, so it will make it, the LAS tool is not really made for this, so it will make, make some form of transformation of the data to um, a local coordinate system. As long as there's no scaling, we know that the units are in meters. So be happy. And this data is stored. So when we export data again, um, these coordinates will be added back into our data set. This um, is a one square kilometer um, near Roskilde. So it's around four, 8,000 points, 8 million points, sorry. Um, and that is relatively typical. It's about one point per 30 centimeters or so. This is how the image looks when it's loaded in. We can see some peculiarities. It has color in one end, and it's not, no color in the other end. Um, this is because this exactly this square, which is chosen because this is the campus, um, is a combination of two flight lines. So this flight line was using a RGB, while this flight line up here wasn't using an RGB. The, this data is. Um, could look like a photograph, but if I tilt it and zoom a bit, um, we can start to see um, that it's not quite just a a picture. It the data is in three dimensions, as we can see, and um, we might even be able to see these caravans parked here in the caravan shop. See the the roofs here. Um, I can increase the size of the points so it makes it a bit clearer. So this is basic of, of, of the data set. Um, it has a, lots of additional values in it. These are in, um, in, in the lingo of Cloud Compare called scalar fields. So in addition to the RGB, it will, I have a down here, I can see that I'm using my point source now. So you can see that this is this, that this part was from one flight line, and this is from another flight line. Um, this data set is also a, um, a classified data set. So I can uh, add a classifier. I have, add some, I have created a color scheme that matches. So I just have to uh, find my color scheme here, which I've called Classify. You can create your own color schemes uh, like that. So here um, is because this is a color scheme that matches what we have in um, in ArcGIS. So this is more or less the same colors. So we have the university. Um, Like here, um, you can see the entrance. We can even see through the entrance, um, and um, we can see all the lovely small square buildings. And this is our dear beloved lecture room. So um, this data set here is if you, if you ever wanted to know. Well, how tall is a building at the university? We can do measurements. We can do lots of different things. I will leave that to another video where I'll be talking more about um, the use of, um, 
of its cloud compare. What um, I want to talk more about is <clears throat> some of this data that's in it, namely mainly this return laser. So um, if I switch here to say that instead of using my classified, I'll use my return number. What is perhaps obvious is that I can find a tree somewhere like that. Um, always a trick to rotate these things. Um, what we can see is that we have different values. Um, we have a, um, a, a one at the top. And as we go down towards the bottom, we have higher and higher return values. So our top point was our first return. And then as we go down through the vegetation, we get our second, third, and fourth, and fifth return. So these are these returns that we can see. We can also see them from here. And we see all the different elements here. So we have a return. These um, classifications I was talking about, there is um, the American Society of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing have made a standard list. Of, um, of classifications. So those classifications I was using before when I was showing my um, down here. So classify um, these values here. I can uh, have my values on so I can see. Um, that's what I wanted to do. So we have we have one, two, three. So two is a, that brown, which is equal to the ground. The light green of that ground is a low vegetation. And we have high vegetation or medium vegetation. So we have these different values in, and buildings, which are our six here. So this is because this is a classified data set. But it uses this international uh, classification for um, for working with the data. So you, most countries, you will find exactly the same code if you're working with classified data. So um, that basically sums up this uh, very short introduction to LiDAR and what it is. As I said in a later video, I will talk more about using um, Cloud Compare and how to extract information from it. So, see you.